welcome and a big hello to everybody listening live. I can already tell it's going to be a great space. Everybody's showing up. We got a powerhouse on stage today. And I think Crypto Face is rugging, but we got a lot of good people coming tonight. Cassius, um, Action, J Crypto, Seth. If you guys want to join the conversation, request up. I know that Cassius is actually going to be giving us a little preview of his new song towards the end of the show. So make sure to stay tuned in. It's going to be fire. But hey, before we get started, give us some love, like, retweet, comment, let us know how you're feeling today. What are you bullish on? I want to know. Aaron, what's happening? Hey, what's up, Altcoin Daily Army and Crypto Nation at large? Tina, panelists, great to be here with you. I see some people out in the audience uh, in this space. Great to be here with you as well. Cryptocurrency, guys, what's there to say? The market's volatile. Uh, you know, Ethereum just successfully had their uh, their hard fork upgrade, the Den Kuhn upgrade. It's supposed to make L2s a lot more cheaper, more usable, and kind of sets the stage for Ethereum's next upgrade, par for the course with Ethereum. And uh, Elon Musk, guys, really uh, throwing his support to uh, to Dogecoin again. Dogecoin! Uh, Doge to the moon. I was wondering if he was going to do it because it wasn't just a year or two ago he was involved in like a frivolous lawsuit about pumping Doge. I don't know if that ever got thrown out or, or whatever, but Elon Musk says he wants to make it so you can pay for Tesla cars with Dogecoin. He he truly loves the coin. Uh, but besides that, you know, it's it's good to be in crypto. We got the the having 30 days away, got the, the ETFs still pumping. Uh, yeah, there's plenty to talk about. Of course, and you guys, I always forget to nest things up, so if you have anything that you would like to nest up, go ahead and do it. Cash it if you want to put the song up there, free, free. But Crypto Face, welcome. I know you have a lot of knowledge about the market and are pretty savvy when it comes to technical analysis. So I'm excited to have you join the panel today. How are you? I think it's been a while since we met back in Miami, but what's going on with you? Oh man, hopefully uh, I'm not rugging and you guys can hear me okay. Can you hear me yeah, okay? Yeah, Sweet. Um, thanks for having me on here, man. This is uh, like altcoin, man. The altcoin bros, they're the top dogs. You know what I'm saying? There's no points for second place. And so uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, Miami was totally chill. Um, and you guys were totally chill. And so, uh, yeah, I, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm so bullish. Um, I mean, we're, this is like the fourth time ever where the money flow on um, like the trading system that I use has ever printed in, in the three times before. I mean, it was just super hard up and to the right. And so far, that's been happening. These little pullbacks don't mean anything. Um, there's always first times for everything. So is this on a longer term? Is this on a longer term time frame you're talking yep. about when you're because you know we go to you for the technical analysis? You're staying on long term time frame. If things are looking okay. Yeah, weekly. You know, the weekly time frame is is uh, a, a good a good time frame. I mean, as far as like long term, at least you know I'm I'm thinking like six months to a year. I mean, pro, I mean, obviously like super long term. You know, we're all hella bullish on that. But as far as like price action right now and. In the immediate short term, like there's, there's really, there's no stopping us. Like there's, there, there's no stopping. I mean, I, I uh, bought a a big order of Bitcoin twice, um, over the counter, and I, I like never do that. And so, um, I, I'm super bullish. I, I I'm, I'm bullish on all crypto, like altcoins and, and Bitcoin alike. And uh, really, I, I almost feel like regret for having you know cash in my bank account because the value of that has just gone down so much um and and investing is hard too and so like i, I try and beat myself up but man if if we plugged in i was talking to some ai um some some finance ai guys that are working with like the second biggest ai and they're doing this finance stuff and i'm like you know what happens when you guys plug that thing in and it tells you to put all your cash into crypto, like it's like, oh shit, you know, or we got, I guess we got to do it. You know, that's what like MM crypto does. Chris has like 30 grand in cash to pay rent and buy groceries. 
and the rest is all in Bitcoin. That dude's crazy, but super respect, and it's it's the right thing to do. And so, yep, it's the fourth time since the beginning of Bitcoin that a certain um, confirmation has printed. And um, yeah, I mean, we're it's the first time before the having we broke all time highs, and there's no fucking stopping us. I don't know where it's gonna go, but it's just going up and to the right. That's what I know. And I'm not scared that's to say crypto face. That's right, crypto face. I mean, here's what the financial experts are doing. Here's if you want to be a financial guru, an expert, you be mindlessly irresponsible with your money. You don't cold cash. Come on, you sell everything. You sell your wife. You sell your husbands. You sell your kidneys. You put it all. You get you get your hands on some culo, baby. Mindlessly irresponsible. Get you some cock in you, baby. That's how you make money. Let's go. Baby. Uh, I got. I mean, actually have a bone to pick with the altcoin daily bros because they said us Pepe holders were virgins and Ooh. and look at us now. We were the chosen ones. We were the chosen ones. You're the so, rich virgins now. That's right. And so yeah. it's like hell yeah, we're pure <laughs> and we're rich. But uh, no, nah, I'm just joking, bro. So um, yeah, man, I'm just. It, uh, it's really happy to stick this. Through. It's it's really interesting. Happy to have you here, CryptoFace. Actually, give me one sentence, CryptoFace. Finish this sentence. This, because you just talked about how you're bullish. Uh, Bitcoin hits at least this price this cycle. What do you think? 200,000. I had that number in my head. I thought 200,000 is, is, is like a number that's kind of just been flashing in my head. And um, there was... Uh, some other AI hedge. Well, I wanted to be dude. based off something, right? What'd you say? Is it in your head, or is that like based off the technicals? Well, kind of, kind of, kind of both. Like there was kind of both. Um, I know it's kind of close because this huge AI hedge fund dude said, uh, like he thinks it's like three hundred eighty-six or three hundred eighty thousand. Um, but two hundred thousand might be kind of like conservative or not. To, to be honest, bro, I really don't know. Like, sometimes I feel like I, I know. Like, a few years ago when Bitcoin was six or 8,000, I'm not trying to toot my horn, but I was able to chart it, and I was like, April, May 2022, $40,000, $45,000. And we went up to 60 k before that, but in April, May 2022, two year, it, it, 40 45000 I was able to, like, nail that one. And then there's some times where I have no idea, and I feel like this is one of those times where i mean it could just go bonkers dude it could go bonkers so but if i was going to be safe i would say 200 that well and you know you and you know uh new people sometimes don't realize that you know particularly traders but everybody should really be doing this you know as if the if the information changes you're changing your opinion so it could be two thousand a uh, hundred thousand today it could be three hundred thousand tomorrow or one hundred thousand you know depending on how the technical set up and what's going on so always be uh, kind of staying in tune and you know updating your opinion with new information. Yep, and one way that I've learned to really do that, bro, is you got to let go of the ego and not get trapped in, you know, like making a call or thinking something's going to happen and and that changes. Like truly letting go of your ego and just being humble with like, yeah, you know, my position's changed and now this is this like. You know, taking on the market is, is hard enough as it is. You know, don't let your pride and ego get you stuck. That's great advice. And I guess while we're on the topic, anybody on the panel have a higher price target or maybe lower? You want to 280. Ooh, that's it? Cash it? I was, you just wanted I was to say, say it, huh? I was <laughs> going to say 281, but my ego stopped me. I want $1. <laughs> Is one yeah, I think it depends on the time frame. I mean, Price when are, right. when are you saying that the top is coming, crypto face? When you think that two hundred would come? I mean, it feels like if we have some sort of a super cycle, yeah, I could see two fifty, but I could also see like a major pullback at one fifty. Um, you know, I mean, if I pull up a chart here, you know, like I said, man, we're kind of in un you know, we're we're in uncharted first time territory where we're witnessing the 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 murder of of our currency, the U.S. dollar. Um, it makes me actually shed a tear thinking about it. I mean, when I like pull up like my spider lines, my uh, like trend lines that have been working for me when we went past twenty k, we were in uncharted waters. Uh, like 
it, it could be, I mean, it could be two, two seventy three, three thirty, uh, four. It it just depends on what time we hit certain things. Like the the trend lines. If you draw a trend line from um, when Bitcoin was at six thousand before it dropped to three thousand. So when Bitcoin went down three k, it went up to uh, like fourteen thousand, and on a hike in a she candle. It's at like 11,000. So if you take lines and you start them from those $6,000 candles and you run them and stick them to the 11,000, it makes these trend lines that have just been absolutely amazing um, ever since Bitcoin went over 20,000. And it like it gave gravity to what uncharted territory. It gave, it, it gave charts in uncharted territory. And so really that's what I'm going to be. I'm going to be looking at that. kind. Of, it, it just depends. Like it, it, it depends on, on what time as far as like super cycles and stuff. Um, you know, sure. We're, you know, I, 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 it's just, there are fundamentals. Like it's not all technical. The fundamentals do matter. And like, when I say fundamentals, that's just like real life stuff, like COVID or something happened. That's, that's fundamental stuff that happens. And so, there is there is a dance between fundamentals and technicals, and um, fundamentally, it's like y y if you don't have crypto, man, you're totally screwed. And it's like a hundred thousand people, a hundred thousand a year isn't shit anymore. It's it's like you have to make four hundred thousand dollars a year now to basically make a hundred thousand, you know, five years ago. So I, I I don't know. I don't know how high they want to go this cycle, um, and so. I think it's really something it's really, really in down. Um, so, but I just think it's going to go up and right so hard. Yeah. Speaking about like fundamentals, it's like, you know, I'm glad you say that because you're an expert when it comes to the, the price charts, but you got to take into account fundamentals. We're literally watching gold be replaced as the, as you know, the new generation's gold in real time. The outflows for the gold ETFs are outflowing. The flows for the Bitcoin ETFs are inflowing. We're, we're literally, you know, watching the, the switch from analog to digital happen before our eyes. So something to note. But even gold um, going up, so I would say. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, you, it's uh, gold is definitely going up, and I do have a little piece on gold. I had a, and I'm really not just, just trying to sound like a douchebag, but I had a major prediction on gold basically come true, and I'll give you the speed course, the crash course. So gold was stuck at 2,000. Gold cannot, could not break 2,000 for the longest time. And the long story short is because the top three banks that hold all of like the gold trades the sell side trades the sell side paper just held too much of it and basically my theory was that in order for gold to ever be able to break out of 2000 one of these banks or more of them would have to have some major shit hit the fan what there was twice where there was lines all over asia we'd saw it on the news lines of people buying gold asians buying gold Yet the price could not go over 2000 because these three banks just had too much. They had too much to sell. And then what happened? Credit Suisse. Credit Suisse. Out of all the gold, the gold banks, it was Credit Suisse that had their shit backed. And we're starting to see that liquidation of, of shit going on behind closed doors is finally like breaking the chains of, of gold going over 2000 I love gold. I don't like fiat. But I still like gold, um, and and you know gold has real use case, and I, and the two can dance together. Like gold, it's 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 okay to like gold, and I still think it's valuable. Obviously, the games ain't gonna be like Bitcoin and crypto and shit. But um, I, I I'm still long. I still have gold in a few different forms, and I like gold too. And so I'm bullish on gold for sure right now as well. Yeah, and I just wanted to add, you know, gold kind of wasn't breaking out 
after four years so it's just breaking out after trying so hard and it just goes to show you national banks central banks they're all buying up gold why because they're realizing that you know the people in the traditional finance are realizing they're starting to doubt fiat they're realizing that they need a harder asset so them coming towards gold it just shows that they're kind of willing to change things up and then why not come for digital gold after you know <laughs> but j crypto i want to hear from you too any thoughts do you think retail is here or quick comment on that uh on the gold gold silver guns and liquor you can't go wrong and also crypto don't forget about crypto all of the above my friends all of the above if you don't own it enough you don't own any gold. of this you gotta get more let's go i knew you were coming Bitcoin did flip silver though right I know you were coming, action. Let's go, baby. Where you at? What are guns? What are guns, my guy? <laughs> action, yeah, bringing no. that action, baby. This, uh, this, this, this cycle is uh, is strange, right? Because we have such a such a a, a, a negative, you know, society right now, right? I mean, th things are just absolutely unreal. We're in this insane bubble that. You know they're 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 trying to get ahead of it and control it. It's it's not it's it's not really working in their favor, but it's helping us absolutely, right? Because what's what's happening? What's happening? BlackRock said, you know what? I want in the game now. You know, I want publicly in the game. Let's do it. They did it with uh, I believe they had their system. What was it? Aladdin before that that was tra was trading for their you know elites of elites, and then now they they bum rushed in which that gave the framework for all the others to come in because they're, and think about this. He said, you know, he was mentioning fundamentals, but my, the biggest core fundamentals that, that w us here, if we're not bullish now, I don't know what's going to tell what's, what's going to get you there. I, I really don't. But if you look at what all, where all the banks are right now, right, they're barely scraping by ponzing their money. So where are they going to make more money? That they, they, there's really a, no other avenue that they can exhaust, right? Their their their, their credit swaps and their all, all the all the back end lovely money manipulation is so stretched out and 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 squeezed out that dude that they, they really have nowhere else to turn. Now, what's the best way? Let's siphon liquidity from another country. How are you going to do that? Crypto. I, that's that's. I mean, they, there's there's no other common sense way to think about it. You know, the best way to siphon liquidity from another country is to take it from with crypto because crypto has no borders. You know, crypto has no borders. If you're not in, you and any of you guys down below, if you've been hanging out, just looking around from January of 2023 all the way to now, you're like, man, I think I missed it. You didn't miss nothing. We're still early, dudes. We're still. We're early. not taking anything from anybody, J Crypto. What we're doing is providing an avenue <laughs> for them to uh, for them to give us money. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there you go. That's how you state it. Yeah, I, I like I I like banks. The banks gave us freedom. I'm a I am a fan of Jamie Dimon. I know I know a lot of crypto people hate him. I I read his books. Um, but on the side note, and what I, are you uh, a fan of? What attributes does he have that you're a fan of? What what'd you say? <laughs> what attribute? Yeah, why are you a fan? Um, well, he I like what he did with Bank One and Chase Bank. He came in and they were they were actually too decentralized in their systems. Um and they were losing track of shit. They were not organized at all. I mean, besides being a boss, like I don't care who you are, if you become a CEO of like one of the top banks. You know, I, I kind of have respect for you, but just kind of how he, he pulled things together with Bank One and and all their systems were fucked up and sloppy and he just, he really tightened, tightened that ship. He's, I, I mean, if you, if you want to blame anyone for bailouts or anything, you really have to blame the government. Jamie Dimon was just the guy that they went to you know, and said, hey, can you bail us out and, and, and bail these banks out? And he's the one who drafted those contracts. So just having that amount of responsibility is something that, that I respect. And um, I just, you know, I, I just... I just <laughs> wait, wait a minute, Crypto Face, because it only takes one person to make the baby, right? Not two? That's what you're saying? You only blame the government? Not Don't don't blame the people and the, and, and, and the, and the, and the control factors behind that, right? <laughs> Well, well, you know, listen, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's very hard for us to just somehow 
start a civil war nowadays with the internet and all kinds of shit. It's not like the revolution. Like, you know, I, I don't know if I really want to go down that path of the conversation. Um, but I fuck what I was going to say before those statements was that, um, I, I pulled up like the two week here and just off minimum one year, two years is totally, totally within the insanity of pump that we're going to get or more like, it's like it's like we haven't even started yet. On what do you mean? Week. What do you mean? You, as you said, you're on the two week chart, and within the next year or two, you think there's explosive upside? Yeah, like like we have at least one to two years or more of explosive upside. Because like when I go to the like the on the weekly with the fourth time ever confirmation, that's one hundred percent. It's one hundred percent accurate. We've already started going up and right. But when I go to even higher time frames, it's literally like just beginning. When on the other previous bull runs, like we were already hella in the green and lines were already moving. It's, it's, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll like send you, uh, I'll send it to you on Twitter, just like the picture um, of just explaining it to you, maybe if you want. And it's just like, wow, it's like, dude, we haven't even started yet. We haven't even or you started can put, yet. You, you feel, feel free to post it to your Twitter and put it up in the nest. Uh, yeah, let me. Uh, I don't. I don't really know how to do that stuff. So just I'm post on Twitter. We'll take care of you. Or you can DM uh, me, and I'll put I'm it up try. there. <laughs> okay, let me let me put this stuff together. Now I'm just here to listen. Hey, uh, Cassius, what what are your thoughts, man? Like, I'm I'm psyched to hear your rap. You made like a rap song for for Crypto Face. You're gonna premiere later. You made one for us a year or two ago. Love that. But. Uh, what cryptos are you focusing on nowadays to rap about? Uh, well, just just a quick clarification. Uh, Crypto Face raps on the song. You got to hear his voice rapping on it too. So he goes whoa, first. whoa, whoa! Yeah, that's why you did oh, a uh, can't miss event. <laughs> Crypto Face and Cash is gonna bust a rhyme, baby. It, it ain't it ain't on no regular shit neither. This is advanced level, so make sure you you tap in. The song came out today. Actually, she put it in the nest, but um. What made you? We had to record one word at a time before I ran out of breath from smoking wait, cigarettes. Wait, like easy. Wait till they hear. This ain't no regular shit. <laughs> wait till they hear. But uh, um, no, I mean, here's the thing. I'm, I'm bullish as all hell. Of course, I am right now in the markets. I am also skeptical. But here's the thing. I don't know what the risk of the downside is. And I'm, I'm speaking in general terms. You asked me about specific coins, but I really we are in a situation where I think rising tides are going to lift all boats. So far, we're kind of mostly following the general pattern bitcoin runs first ethereum and then seeing some of the alts in this case we've had a few of the alts like solana get, you know kind of be ahead of that trend but um i think still think there's time now the meme coins are pumping i still think there's time for more like the utility coins ai and gaming i gaming coins are still going to pump significantly i think we're early uh i'm doing the old test uh you know see how many friends and family hit me up that's a real sentiment indicator by the way and i'm i believe you guys probably know that but like i literally was talking to my girl and i was like well my cousin hasn't hit me up yet but let's see how long it takes him to call me and then he like called me that day you know what I'm saying? Like, like people are hitting me up you know and blue check marks in my dms in the music world and things like that you know all of a sudden they got a lot of questions about crypto as soon as bitcoin hits all-time highs so you know if it's similar to the last run which was you know when bitcoin hit twenty thousand, it was kind of like the confirmation of the bull run and then we went straight up from there i mean i, I think it's only a matter of time for the rest of the alts and i gaming and stuff like that to really get that epic push um i would on some of the alts suggest you know have a trading thesis where you're going to take profit at least some profit along the way because i just am one of those people that believes when things shoot straight up parabolic they're inevitably going to have a major pullback and when you're in some of the smaller coins you don't know if they're going to get a second pump. So just be prepared to take some profit if you're in the, you know, the real shittiest of shit coins to take some profit if they pump. <laughs> Julie is agreeing with you. Julie is agreeing with you, I see. Julie, what I do you do. see? Um, yeah, so I've actually been onboarding more normies this time through Deepin products because they just kind of understand the whole concept of the decentralized physical infrastructure. And so um, just like explaining that to them and getting them onboarded that way, it was kind of some of my friends who had dipped their toes in the water the last bull cycle were really easy to get back in. And so it's funny because like my brother, I had him onboarded into Pepe 
I don't know, like a couple of weeks ago. And so he keeps sending me his Pepe screenshots. So I'm like, and he's just the first one. So I know we're still early, but um, yeah. I, that's, that's a risky move, <laughs> telling your brother, hey, buy Pepe. I know. I that know. was not risky at all. That I told the move. dudes. I told the dudes from Vegas, God, what's their name? They run the crypto show in Vegas. Sin um, City. Sin City. And he did a post on Twitter. He's like, I'm trying to get my grandma into some crypto. Like, give me some coins. And I was like, Pepe. He's like, you want me to get my grandma into Pepe, bro? And I was like, yeah. And he didn't do it. <laughs> I feel like you guys, on my popular opinion, I would say, I think one indicator that I look at is like Coinbase is still 165. So I think retail is not fully here. I've gotten some messages too, but I think they're just mostly about, hey, this is pumping again, you know, but they're not sure yet if they should get in or not. I would say, you know, as long as Coinbase goes number one again, then I know we're at peak. But that's just one metric. You're talking about on the app yeah, store. Yeah, on the app store, exactly. Ranking, you know. But I do like where Julie's going with it. I mean, maybe, hopefully, Pippa will go up and you don't have to await Thanksgiving dinners. Well, and it was so funny because, like, he already has Coinbase and Robinhood. And so he was telling me, like, oh, my gosh, my Shiba from last time, I think he said it's up to, like, 10 grand. And he was like, should I sell it? Should I sell it? I'm like, Shiba hasn't even run yet. Like, just hang on to it. In fact, you should get on Pepe, but you'll have to jump on a different platform to get it and so anyway yeah i i taught him how to be more of a degen this time and explained like you know this is pre robin hood pre coinbase like so he he gets the concept now <laughs> Julie, yeah, like, with us. by the way we're pumping like, right now like, we're pumping totally, right like, now and i ham hawk he, along he on only it. knows because of me so yeah he's super normal you want to make sure your brother stays a virgin that's what i hear we got my girl Randy here. What's up, Randy? We love having you here. Hi, Tina. Thank you for having me. Hi, everyone. Oh, the whole crypto fam up here. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. It's good to have you. Good. What are you degening on? Um, I'm degening on life, and I'm very excited about Bitcoin and crypto right now. This is like such a great time to be in crypto and just be alive. We're a part of like a really special revolution that's unifying the entire world one set at a time. You're so great on Fox News. You're the best person to have on Fox News to represent us. You, you, you don't crack under pressure when the lights are on. You're charming. You're quick-witted. You're so friendly and terrific. Face, you're the best, man. You know I love you. I know. Tina, I sent you that picture. Oh, it's a pi it's not a tweet. <laughs> you got to post it, well, Tina. I don't know. You said send it to you. I, I, don't, I don't, you know what I'm saying? Gotcha, got I mean, it, it's all on you. That's why I thought it'd be. Uh, do you want me to yeah. tweet it? Would that be easier? If you had tweeted, tweet it, I could send it up there. No, no, no. I'll tweet okay, it. I'll tweet cool, it. Cool, cool. Tina doesn't want to take credit for your awesome <laughs> chart work. I mean, I will if it's alpha, man. I'm stealing it. <laughs> it's it's what a 100% confirmation. Those don't come around often. Randy brings that magic, that one-of-a-kind zest, baby. Every morning, let's go. Brady, baby. Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, if you guys want to tune in, the Daily Zest is live 9.45 a.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday on YouTube.com slash Crypto and X and Facebook and Kick and Twitch and everywhere else that there's live, you know, streaming, I'm there. So tune in and come hang out. Zesty. Cassius. Cassius is the best, man. Like, I, every song that he makes is a banger. And sometimes, like, when I, like, I'm on my show and people ask me to chart algorithms or something, I literally, like, pull up the Algo song because it's it's just so awesome every time. I don't need your money. Just pay, just pay me Algo. an Algo. Hey, right on. <laughs> I love it, man. Has anybody ever gotten paid an Algo? No. <laughs> I think maybe Cash just did. <laughs> they were getting so many from Dog With I'm just, It's just a question. <laughs> no, 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 I have actually the governance pays quite well. So I've been hodling and collecting on the governance. It's actually easy, really easy to use. And it, it makes people kind of participate in it. Algorand's a very easy blockchain to use. And I think that that's one that hasn't got the big pump yet, but they're making big moves mostly overseas. So I think it doesn't get the shiny attention in, in the United States thus far. 
Speaking about overseas, uh, CH, you're representing the, the eastern side of the world. How is everything with crypto over there? I am. I am. Good morning from Taipei. Uh, joining in the Alcoin Daily Show here. Really excited, as always. Uh, thanks for inviting me on. Uh, things are really good. Uh, for those who don't know, I work for BitGet. We are one of the top crypto exchanges based out of Singapore. And uh, things are really bullish. Things are looking real good. Really, really excited to be in the space, as always. That's it's awesome. awesome to have you. And Seth, you're awfully quiet. Seth, did I cut somebody off, by the way? I don't know if I'm rugging. No, well, to, to the first question, uh, yes, I guess I am awfully quiet. To the second question, I don't think you cut anybody off. And I think if if you did, Tina, you're you're the hostess, you're the co-host. And I think most of us just say like, you know what? Thank you, ma'am. May I have another? Please, please cut me off again because you're just too nice. That that's uh, That's just a fact. I think we all enjoy being in these spaces. Thank I you. definitely message her that like not not a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, I. Well, here's the thing. Actually, you you messaged me that too. I'm like, dude, my guy. I mean, we're friendly, but I don't know you like that. You told me getting cool, bro. That's all I'm gonna say. I action. I got into the cooler first. Action! You're cheating on DeFi Kingdom right now, and I don't think they're gonna like it. What are you talking about? I was writing on them all morning. Um, Grady was there. Don't worry. I got everybody covered. Fuck, I meant Grady. Baby. I meant Grady. Sorry, sorry, action. Sorry. I meant, I thought. Oh, baby. I thought you were talking about Dreamer, but no, yeah, no. We got, we got lots of friends oh, in this man. space. This is literally turning sure. into like a conference after party. Can we get back to Alpha, you guys? It's kind of messed up. Well, let's go. Okay, so thank you for, thank you for, Ed, for calling me out, rightfully so. I, thoughts on the markets. Similarly, I, I love what CryptoFace brought up earlier. We have kind of a problem just in measuring how far we've come. So when is 70000 not 70000 Well, when the dollar is worth 30% less. And you, you all have seen me post about this. And you've heard me talk about it in a couple other places. No, this is, this is real stuff, right? So we're trying to denominate stuff. CryptoFace said it in another way, right? Where 100K salary used to mean something. And now we're like, oh, six figures. Yeah, but is it is it is it enough six figures? And same principle applies to how we're denominating our gains right now. And... I mean, I know, I know the Bitcoin maxis right now and probably Randy are all saying like, yeah, but Seth, one, e one Bitcoin equals one Bitcoin and it always has. Sure, except that it, bu it buys you less stuff. And one of my favorite measures, this is an old school measurement of just sort of gets everyone says, oh, look at the Dixie. And I'm like, you know what? That's cool and all. I'm a really simple guy. I'm really not the Taco you know, sharpest Bell, man in the box. It's Big Bell. Mac. Big it is Mac. not Taco Bell. Bro, it's Let's the Big go. Mac. It, here's the thing. It was actually institutionalized. This was an institutional measurement was the Big Mac index. And why is that? Because Taco Bell, first off, isn't food. We, don't never say that again. We can't be friends. Okay, listen, you've never had a cheese saying, to crunch before, bro. I'll take a son, bro. There's eight, son. Eight, Taco eight, Bell's nine, one seven. of the best ones, actually. Oh my gosh. I gave I gave up Taco Bell before they before they invented that nonsense. So I'm good. Thanks. Enjoy I'm I'm leaving more for you. There you go. I'm but sorry it's not for real food. You up. Yeah. Oh no, it's okay. It's okay. Um you can't you can't take what isn't really yours, right? And and if it's uh if you can take it then I guess it's yours. But with the Mac index, the reason that became a measurement is because McDonald's, they institutionalized food, right? Like in terms of cost per calorie, how they feed masses of people, right? In the 1980s, they stopped even saying billions served. They just realized, okay, well, they were counting for a while. They stopped counting because they've fed more people than UNICEF has. They fed more people than uh, than than any number of like, like Greenpeace, UNICEF, and, uh, and, and I think also the Blue Cross combined. So th it's ridiculous, the number of people that, that McDonald's has, has fed. They figured out how to make the most efficient use of a penny per calorie. And so when the Big Mac Index became a thing, it made perfect sense because it has to adapt to every single market where different fiat currencies are used to, to generate this, this product, right? To feed billions and billions of people. You can't do it without getting the most efficient pipeline of food. And they really did dial it down to a science. Now that, that Big Mac index was retired in 2016. That for me, that wraps another layer of tinfoil onto my little, my little cap. So I, I think, I think that there are reasons that that, that went away, but I think it's because it was too good a measurement because it adapts for every single currency. It's a, it's a better indicator than, than most Forex. You can't arb it because McDonald's is already there with all their quants figuring out how to get the highest number of calories per penny or per, per fiat unit or whatever. So it makes me sad that we don't have something like a, like a Big Mac index for crypto and especially for Bitcoin because right now when we cross $70,000, I just thought, oh, that's cool, but it's fool's gold. 
nobody made gains yet, and we won't until it crosses 100k. Are you saying they can't be speculated like the CPI? I agree with you, bro. Because if I just had it in cash, then I'm losing that. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, I get what you're saying, but uh, it's it's like I am making gains because if everyone else is not doing it, then I'm gaining oh. on them. It's like crypto face. You missed my entire point. If you've been holding on to Big Max, you'd be in the gains now. Okay, I'm actually I'm joking. Just denominating, right? Like, but you, you're right too, right? The riskiest thing is not to take any risks. But but Bitcoin itself hasn't actually printed new real world buying power gains. Not yet. But what but price it's is use cases in but but the use case of being able to send money is like that's that's so important. That's like my favorite use case is no, I know it's, to, it's the most permissionless big Mac you'll ever buy. I, I appreciate right. that, and that's why I still think that the index works. It's an no, interesting totally thing to consider. Big Mac well, based on in inflation, right? I saw one report, and I, I didn't do the math myself, but it said that the new, the real all-time high relative to the last sixty-nine thousand would be seventy-three thousand, based on inflation over the you know since then past three years. Do you have like the math on that, uh, Seth? So here, here's my first thought: is that CPI is a lie, and that, that's just an easy thing to say. But you can look it up, and we realize that when we go to the gas pump, when we go to the, and when we go to the grocery store, nah. That doesn't track, right? Cash is the math ain't math. And when you look at what people really spend on, and when you look at what people really spend on, actually inflation has been double digit for at least two years. We are, uh, I'm really trying hard not to say bad words right now. We're in a really bad What do you know that you think would be relative to the last all time high and based on inflation over the past three years? I mean, I spitballed it at 100K, but no, I don't have, I'm not, I'm not a quant. I don't have okay. specific numbers. But I spitballed well, what, it they, they printed what? 25% of the total currency. I mean, you could just say like whatever, 25% of 69K. I mean, 70, 73 sounds about right. But the 89 cent burrito is now $5 and like 23 cents. I think it's a lot more because I think 50% of all the money in supply was printed between 2020 and 2021. So I think it's way more than that. Let, let us not forget, so if you, even, even if you pull up the CPI metric, they're, they're negating a lot of other factors, a lot of cost of living factors, right? That the average, whatever, I mean, we're all in America. Well, there's a couple that are not in America. We've got Asia here, but, um, but let's say just even, even in America or even, I mean, those numbers are manipulated in Europe too, but they're, they're manipulated to, to, to show these, oh, exuberant, stats that counterbalance exactly what we're doing exactly what's what we're going through right all that means is you got to make more you're, you're not holding enough crypto that's all that means and that right set let's go so, so actually, one, one, one just so you know it's 86 here. roughly if you're doing you know 0.25 and then 0.5 is over 100k so just put those in perspective well, you know, the one thing I can say is that the CPI indicators, they're a lagging indicator, actually. They're more reflexive instead of uh, something more of a proactive uh, type figure. And the thing is, these numbers, they come from people who pick and choose from the agency, right? Government agencies send these people out to, you know, malls and stuff, and they'll look at, you know, prices of fucking thongs and shit. And they'll be like, oh, it's actually increased this X amount, but they really don't look at uh, you know, gas and, and food, things that are critical to, to us sustaining our lifestyle, right? So, you know, I, I just feel like uh, with all the money printing that's happening and, you know, the dynamics that's changing in the, in the Bitcoin market, we're due for a much higher price point than most people even expect, especially with that having coming up. Um, just my two cents here. And see, the reason it lags because they need time to change those products from the regular Oreo to the store brand Oreo, right? Like, that's really what they're doing. They need the time to be able to cook the numbers. I mean, I would just say it. That's what they're doing. That's how this thing works. But yeah, CPI does have some, it does have some, uh, some cost of living uh, elements factored in there, and food is, is one of them. But, uh, but to your point, CH, they're, uh, they're not representative of what normal people actually buy. Those are totally cherry-picked, too, where it'll be like, oh, yeah, so whatever, a, a dozen eggs costs, it still costs $1.75. Maybe it went up 20 cents, but again, we, we all know that that's a lie. It's the same thing with the job reports. The job reports, they're including part-time jobs now. I mean, that, that's what? part-time jobs dude whoa 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 j crypto you're not understanding you see there are more jobs because before people were able to make a living with one job now they need three so yeah there are more jobs out there this got pretty depressing yeah, bro, let's talk about something guys. else dude i'm fucking wild I see. hey let me put this out to the group let me put this out to the group um anybody can jump on this 
because I feel like a lot of people in this space right now as a speaker were around for at least one other bull market, at, at least in 2021, if not more. How are you guys like kind of updating your plan this time to take even more advantage of the bull market? So like practical, doable things you're doing this time that you wish you were doing last time, but this time you think it's important to do. I'll jump on that. Um, the being smarter about investing and not like besides like outside of crypto um i've really wanted to get into the airbnb stuff and there's a couple like semi-billionaire type dudes that i know and like i've been asking them about it trying to learn from people that have greener grass than i do like and and they're always willing to help like if as long as you just ask and you're not annoying um so like Real estate specifically is something I've been kind of tuning, tuning my guns in. And, um, yeah. I mean, I'll tell you what I learned. I mean, as you guys probably know, I lost a lot of money in Celsius. And, uh, you know, the not your keys, not your she shit is, of course, for real. Everyone, I don't need to repeat that to, for all y'all to know. But it's something that I'm repeating for a lot of new folks this time around. Um, being diversified in, in as many ways as you can, similar to what CryptoFace is saying. He's, he's trying to think diversify out of crypto even, right? But also just diversify where you're even holding your crypto is something that I'm trying to, to teach folks to do. Yes, Cashless, that's yeah. me too, honestly. I lost so much on Voyager and definitely not your keys, not your coin. And honestly, like it took me until experiencing it to learn what the phrase means, but don't do that. Learn from our experience and just, you know, custody your own assets. It's so easy. It, it, it might like seem hard from the outside, but once you actually start doing it, it's much easier than you would think. And I guess one more thing for me was, holding things longer than I should have. <laughs> if you want to take profit, do it, you know, do it against your own investments. Don't follow all the trends and take profits, get out. I held so many NFTs to zero where I could have actually made profit on them. So definitely don't make that mistake. Yeah, I can echo that as well. As far as, you know, being in the market for one, two, three bull runs, you have that intuition that, hey, I'm getting really euphoric or I'm taking screenshots, I need to take profit. And I think as well as also, um, you know, not fighting the trend. So I remember in my previous bull runs, I would, it would keep going up and I'd try to short it. And it's like, it just kept going after that. And since we're in crypto, you know, we get in a lot earlier than retail. And it's, it's hard to think like you're so early and you just want to take profit. But the matter of the fact is, most people still haven't got in, especially now with the ETF approved. They have all these countries going to get in. I mean, there's so much more money about to flow into the space. So that's really something I'm working on is just, you know, not fighting the trend, but at the same time, like y'all were saying, diversify and just making sure that, you know, you're taking advantage of all these different narratives um, because there's so much more than there, than there was last bull run. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, on that point, you know, I, I think having a plan is so critical for me. You know, I, I've been through, I've been through two cycles now uh, and having a plan and really just taking your damn freaking profits, man. I mean, you know, I was, I was hanging out with, with uh, the the Altcoin Daily Twins and also Tino, we were chatting, and they know I I took a round trip to you know multiple seven figures and back down because I thought I was on top of the world. Didn't really have a whole lot of plan uh, except thinking that I'm fucking rich and that was stupid. But you know it's okay. Things are coming back up. Uh, things are looking good. But having a plan is critical, and do not be afraid to take profits because when you do, things are definitely going to crash again, and then you'll have money to buy in, and that's the the crypto game. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, let me let me add also just right now for, for this particular bull run, something that I think is is important and it's been mentioned in a couple of different ways, but it's more just about like making sure that you're safe. We, we talked about like pretty some some pretty adversarial conditions financially right now. This is this is tough for a lot of families. There are a lot of people who are like legitimately struggling with with underemployment or just feeling that they're not quite financially getting ahead enough that they even have a lot of discretionary income to to move into this asset class. Like it, it's it's probably harder than it's been in in previous runs for people to free up some capital to just start getting in, at least for retail to do that. And it also seems like with this run, the thing that is distinct and very, very different is this is absolutely the institutional run. The last one, it looked like we had, we had a false start. It looked kind of cool. I mean, prior to, God, I'm sorry, I'm thinking about the one before that. Um, but before that, when Stripe and all the other payment processors, you know, prior to 2017, all the other payment processors, they had offered support for Bitcoin. That you could you could make payments in Bitcoin. All the stuff that we were like, oh yeah, mass adoption. We we need it, and they they, they offered it, and then they pulled it away, and then they offered it again, and then they pulled it away. Why would they do that? 
because there's not enough market depth. There's not enough. Uh, there's not enough liquidity in these markets to make it a game that they can play that, that makes sense for them. It's just a, it's a profit, uh, not a profit center. It's a cost center for them to maintain these programs because they just don't see enough happening. Well, this run, it's very very different. The ETFs are a big deal in that respect, but then also uh, the fact that there's other institutions coming in and all trying to get. Uh, find their own way to make this asset make sense and make this network make sense. More proposed L2s. And this was predicted, right? Uh, guys like Jamie Dimon, who I'm not as big a fan as Crypto Face, but you know, he's he's a great man. He's got he's got his position for a reason. But guys like like Jamie Dimon, they he didn't really get involved openly in the game until he could find a way to to rewrite the rules or to you know to own the game or to own the, all the teams or to own the league, right? Essentially. We're at that phase where when he starts talking positively about it, it is only because it's a game that he knows for a fact he will win. And I think that's the, the institutional you know, play in crypto. And why we're seeing these weird, weird indicators that show there's volume in certain places that you don't expect. And then when you talk to your friends, like, like Cassius was saying, yeah, somebody might call you, a friend or a family member might call you, but it's not like it was the last run. It's not like everybody's calling you to say, you know, oh, I saw something happen or, hey, did, did you, did, you know, why didn't you tell me about Pepe? You, you selfish son of a bitch, like whatever it is that, you know, that, that your, your family would tell you. Um, there's not as much of that. It's really more just these massive, massive, in some cases, you know, international conglomerates that are all like, they're, they're all chomping at the bit to be first to have one of these products or to take a massive position and buy up all the native assets in crypto. Um, so I think that's a distinct difference too. And we have to be careful about, you know, supply shock playing uh, you know playing its part in this market as well and it's not being able to even get enough crypto or as much as we want to be able to hold on our own yeah and Seth, that's one to uh pile on top of that real quick for top signals i know tina was talking about the coinbase app rank number one um i do think because the landscape has changed you know things that worked in the past may not work in the future uh the coinbase app is definitely one i'm watching but i'm also watching the 21 weekly moving average if that bitcoin crosses below that and holds for three to four weeks that usually marks the top and then also you have the Ethereum Foundation selling large amounts of ETH or you have, you know, Bitcoin or crypto Google search trends reaching 100. So it's kind of like one of those layered approaches to selling your, you know, your coins versus um, focusing on one now and with, with other countries involved. I mean, you know, it's who knows when the top's going to be, but definitely having those take profit levels regardless if you think it's going to keep going higher because euphoria can definitely change your your targets on that. You were there, man. I've been around since 2012, and there are three things. Every cycle, I learned something new, right? First one was getting burned with Mount Gox and all that, so I learned about self-custody the hard way. Um, also, losing my keys. That was not fun. Um, the next cycle around, I learned to keep my circle small. That's the other. Don't, don't don't cry. It's okay. I'm a billionaire. I just don't have access to my funds. It's okay, guys. I'm just helping out everybody else. I use it as a learning experience, so y'all don't do it yourselves. But it's the second time around, I learned to keep my circle small because ultimately, you got to understand that some people People are just looking out for themselves in the space. So try to, you know, be, be friendly. There's nothing wrong with being friendly. But when you when it comes to the details of things, make sure that you know who you're talking to and how much information you're okay with sharing with other people. Because they might sound friendly at first, but are they really looking out for you or for their own self-interest? I mean... That's just how it works. And this last cycle, I learned that I just need to play the game, and I am. And I'm pretty happy with the gains that I've had in a lot of meme coins lately. It's not something that I used to do, but I said, you know what? Screw it. What the heck not? There's money being thrown around. People are literally throwing money at this. And I know I can make it. Why wouldn't I take advantage of it? And, you know, like Randy likes to say, it's as long as I'm throwing it back on Bitcoin to store my value, I'll be all right. Perfect. Yeah, I, and I just, that, uh, well, I just wanted to add for crypto data. You know, the Coinbase indicator for me is more like is retail here, not that like we're at peak or whatever, because this one has been an institutional run. And, you know, we keep seeing inflows on a daily basis, which is massive. It's crazy. I mean, demand is crazy, unmatched um, from before. And supply is just going to get less in April. So who knows? But generally, I think, you know, price is set by the behaviors of kind of buyers and sellers. And I think most people are just waking up today seeing the consistent upward trends and are excited. So not many are selling yet because they see these huge inflows coming. But, you know, at some point, the sentiment might wear out. But I think in general, like the masses, the retail, your family, cousins, that's, I think, like, those are the ones that aren't here yet. But Crypto Face, I'll throw it to you. I know you wanted to say something. Yeah, um, and you're totally right. Um, for the last bull run, 
there was like uh, like you couldn't go out to dinner no matter where in the world. I, I went to like four different countries, and every time we went to dinner, you heard people talking about shit coins or chain link or Litecoin every single time. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That happened, easy on those. Well, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just calling them shit coins. Um, listen, I'm, I love my shit coins. I have a bunch of them. But there was like four months that went by until like that got sold off. Um, but I got to say, this time is different. Um, like everyone and everyone's kind of expecting like a pre having pullback, but I really don't think there's going to be one. And nobody loves calling a top and preaching about chaos before the masses being the lone guy talking chaos than like me. Of course, I, of course. That's something that I enjoy doing, but I'm putting like my ego aside because it's just because of what's in front. Like the money doesn't lie. What's going on. It doesn't lie. And so everyone's expecting a pullback before they're having, but besides these like one day, maybe two day, like sell offs. I don't really see it, man. Like, I mean, if it is talk about being, you should hope there's a pullback. Cause that's like your last chance. We never had this much Bitcoin being bought before ever. Yeah. The landscape is definitely changing. And Tina, to add on to your point about the Coinbase rank app, it's kind of funny to see um, the sentiment by retail because it was ranked 49 on March 5th as Bitcoin was working to break its all time high. And then we had that flush literally a couple hours later to 60 K and the rank plummeted down to 154 within five days. So that tells you retail is, you know, extremely risk averse whenever they see these flushes and they immediately get out. So these shakeouts, I feel, is going to be nice as we're continuing up, just like we have in bull runs, um, to really keep that rank pretty low because retail doesn't, you know, they don't handle risk good at all. That's a good point. Is VeChain a shitcoin? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that was the real Yeah, stadium. I was like, it, they don't even follow him. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's that. not the real. I had to look yeah. at it. I'm right, in the, right deep in the, the profile. I'm like, wait a minute. I follow this dude. This ain't the right dude. Yeah, me too. I was going through the following. I was like, Aaron, he's not even followed by VeChain. I don't know about this. <laughs> hey, hey, wait a minute. Who called Litecoin a shitcoin? Wait a minute. Was that was that you, Face? Oh, my God. You're, you're, you're oh, Litecoin is the biggest shitcoin. No, no, no. Face is emotional. Face is emotional. Yeah, I'm sorry. Listen, I, you know what? Hold, hold your Litecoin's fine. I'm sure it's going to do fine, but compared to everything else, it's going to get Bro, so it's the most yeah. used coins on crypto ATMs. Are you, well, I, I'll leave and you. BitPay, it's 40, over 40 40% of transactions is more than Bitcoin is Litecoin being spent. Yes! The transactions What's per day, going on, Faith? The amount of Litecoin being moved per day, the fact that it's a 4 to 1 ratio, a halving schedule, Mimble Wimble extension blocks that give you privacy and fungibility, OmniLite, inscriptions in the millions. Heck no. Just because the price doesn't catch up, you can say the same thing about Bitcoin, that it's severely undervalued. How, how do you feel about Monero? The best in crypto. How do you feel about Monero? Please tell me for the love of God. Right, listen, I, I could be wrong. You're more educated on Litecoin than I am. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. That's totally cool. I mean, listen, like the price lacking, but everything else not lacking whatsoever. And, you know, there's even the Litecoin Summit in the summer. I'll be going. Yeah, but you know what? There's summits. There's summits for all kinds of things. Like, listen, crypto, a lot of new cryptos come fast. You got to stay on top of stuff. Like, like Filiconi, for example, I looked at his portfolio. He's, uh, I, I totally respect him. Totally respect him. He's he's kind of like retiring from trading. He's saying, but you know, I look at some of these portfolios. I'm like, damn, it's a lot of old coins, and they're doing good, but they're not pumping like the new coins, you know. And you know, listen, I'm not I'm not trading on Litecoin. I could be totally wrong, you know. I'll, I'll make sure to look out for Litecoin at my local guy. Dude, Litecoin is the bomb. Like it's awesome. It has not. It's never gone down. All of that. But I agree with you. This is what I meant by playing the game. I'm not playing Litecoin game like I used to, just because the upside potential isn't there like everything else let me jump in here you guys can take the litecoin conversation in the dms later after this as we're wrapping up in our last 10 minutes we save the most exciting thing for last i want to kind of give the floor to both crypto face and cassius because i understand that cassius wrote crypto face a theme song so i guess i want to go to cassius first because we're going to hear the song but cassius why did you want to do i think crypto face is a great guy but what motivated you to make a, a song well you know what I'm glad you said that because that's what started it. You know, I just interacted with him on Twitter the same way I do anything. He was like, what's happening, man? You know, 
And then, uh, you know, he, he hit me in the DMs, kind of blessed me up, hooked me up with, with Market Site, for I hadn't actually had the subscription yet. And he plugged me right in without, I didn't ask him for nothing. He's a generous guy, you know what I mean? And I always like to support good people in the space. So, like, real talk, that's kind of what, what initiated it. Cash is one song the for the space. <laughs> Yeah, one song for the space, intro space, song. Please. Let's go. <laughs> but uh, what, hey, what, pay what, that yeah. man. Oh, pay that course. man. We're not confused <laughs> artist here. Is, yeah, yeah, you pay you for. Know, I, 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 I he he, he definitely paid me. as well. So you know, he's he's a good brother. We're kidding about the. <laughs> we're just joking around, but like it would be nice. But no, we're kidding around. Uh, when we listen to the song, Cassius, like what themes are we going to hear in this song? You're gonna hear it when you hear it. <laughs> me. I guess let's go. Let's do it's it. About, it's about Take trading. It away, I mean, it's about trading. Market cipher is about you know the, the song is called the market cipher. But here's the thing, right? He didn't know this originally, but if you're a rapper, you know that like the cipher is like the freestyle cipher. Like when you go in and you go in battle or you freestyle with everybody standing around like in a big circle. So it was like a perfect play on words for a rap song that his his company is called Market Cipher. So uh, I had to come I with some it. extraordinarily like super lyrical ability type of shit on this one. Good luck keeping up. You're gonna have to. You're really gonna have to tune in because wait, and then wait till you see the clever I'm shit. dropping the music video tomorrow too. But today the song is out now, Spotify and everything like that. So I'll play it for you. If you want me to get it popping right now, man, get it popping right now. But then just I want to go to Crypto Face, and then we'll go right back to you, Cassius. Crypto Face. Anything more to say on this experience? It must be pretty cool getting a Cassius Cuvee song about you. I, I think that's cool. Man, I remember hearing, uh, you know, Cash's, Cash's songs and videos with you guys, um, you know, with AJ, with, with Ben, and, um, you know, met him in real life and stuff. He was, of course, always cool, and um, just, it, it, Cash is, is, is mega, mega talented and mega, mega clever in more ways than one, um, you know, so I got nothing but good things to say. I appreciate uh you know, you, you, you doing this for me, Cash is, uh, I mean, it's just, it's, it's amazing. So thank you. The man is the king of bangers, baby. I look at Cash is kind of like I do Bitcoin, way undervalued. He's going to be a bright and shining star. Everybody's going to know about Cash is one day. He's on the rise. Let's go, baby. Well, do your part. Do your part. Get a Cash is fucking song. Get, have him get you on the song. He can help you in so many wait ways. Till, wait till I hear, man. Let, let's play it. Let's play it. You guys get to hear uh, Crypto Face rap for uh, the first time. 